Good evening. Um, I've spent the past 16 years specializing in issues related to human rights in India, so I wanted to ask you all if you can briefly, to begin, join me in a simple chant in Hindi, the national language of India. It goes like this, Ukraine Zindabad. Zindabad is Hindi for long live, so it's like saying long live Ukraine. I say Ukraine, you say Zindabad. Ukraine Zindabad. Ukraine Zindabad. Ukraine Zindabad. Ukraine Zindabad. Long live Ukraine. Thank God that we can stand here together tonight and raise our voices in unison like that, completely free of any fear that we will be dragged away and tossed into some dark dungeon just because we said something the tyrants don't like. I'll tell you, that's not the case in India right now. For the past eight years in India, ever since Modi became prime minister of the country, things have gotten worse and worse and worse. These days, if you're a critic, you can't write, you can't speak, you can't rally, you can't even post something on social media without worrying that you might get a knock on your door, a police case slapped against you, or even a mob showing up to grab you and lynch you. If some of that sounds just a little bit like Russia today, keep in mind that Modi in India and Putin in Russia are what's known in India as bye-bye. That means they're as close as brothers. Well, fascists of a feather do flock together. So as Putin is ravaging Ukraine, Modi's India has stood aside and officially kept its silence, even while Modi's supporters are rallying in the streets to support the invasion and even volunteering to go fight in Russia. Yet, Despite the oppression facing so many in India today, the courage of the dissidents there is holding strong and thousands of brave-hearted souls are still risking their freedom and even their lives to stand up and push back against tyranny. They're doing it even while most of the rest of the people in this world, people like us, remain mostly clueless about their desperate situation. We're seeing similar courage in Russia today. Let us raise a salute to some of the bravest people that we have seen in this modern age. Those Russian citizens who are at this very moment putting everything on the line to stand up and speak out against their government to say, no, we are called to love our neighbors, not bomb them. Do what you will to me but I will not remain silent. Yes. These are the same sorts of people as those brave-hearted German citizens who stood up and spoke out against the Nazis. Thank God, however, that one major difference between those dissidents in Hitler's Germany and those dissidents in Putin's Russia is that there are today many, many more offering open resistance in Russia. Silence is consent. Silence is complicity. Silence is consent. If those brave hearts in Russia and those brave hearts in India can continue to rise up against authoritarian oppression, then what can we do here in America? Safe and comfortable, free and unhindered as we are. The sad reality is that we all too often do absolutely nothing. Well, was our freedom, was our freedom given to us so we could grow fat and lazy basking in our luxury while others around the world are pushed into ever greater misery? Was our freedom given so that we could turn our eyes to every entertainment and distraction imaginable rather than pay the slightest heed to the suffering of our own fellow human beings? Silence is complicity. For years, I've been writing, speaking, and pleading with Americans to wake up to the reality of a rising, no, a risen fascism in Modi's India. 
I won't say that there have been no successes, but most of the time, people can't be bothered. Let me tell you my own latest discouragement. I am taking the cause of Indian Christians to American Christians and telling them, your very own brothers and sisters in India are being persecuted right now. Modi just received the Persecutor of the Year Award last year because the situation there is so grim. They are troubled on every side and they fear massacres at any moment. And what do American clergy tell me? Most say, that's so sad. I'm so glad that you're talking about it. I say, no, 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 no. You need to start talking about it. And then they go silent. Silence is consent. We're gathered here tonight to pray for Ukraine. Thank God for the clergy who are here, but they represent the tiniest handful of those who were invited. Every single clergy member in this city should be here right now. Why? Because true religion is to care for widows and orphans. And God knows that widows and orphans are in no short supply in Ukraine today. Many here in America, however, are far more concerned with keeping their shops warm than pleading the cause of the oppressed. Leave them to God. For we know some things to be true. Among them being that because the battle belongs to the Lord, God may speak to us and say, You have too many and send some away so that it is proven to the world that he brought the victory. I believe that we are thus far seeing this today as the tiny David that is Ukraine even yet holds back the oppressive might of the Goliath that is Russia. So let us pray for Ukraine that God would manifest his glory through the few overcoming the many. Let us also pray for Russia's Putin and indeed for India's Modi. We pray for our enemies. We pray not only for their judgment, but especially for their repentance, for a change in their hearts. Yes. Should that repentance never come, however, we can take great comfort in yet another truth. As they say in Hindi, Jo Hitler ki chal chalega, vo Hitler ki mouth murega meaning those who follow Hitler's path will meet Hitler's end. Or, as we say in American tradition, sic semper tyrannis, thus always to tyrants. We know this is true because we know that God is the only everlasting king. From Ukraine to Russia to India and beyond, let us all stand united together with all people who strive to throw off the shackles of oppression. Let us take hope that one day all will be free. Let us vow that as for me, I will never be silent. And let us remember, as my Sikh friends say, Wahe Guru Jiki Fate. The victory belongs to God. Thank you.